Shalom from Israel. I'd like to welcome you to our new video series entitled Revelation Shorts. And the reason why we call it by that name, Revelation Shorts, is because these are going to be rather short videos, and they're all taken from issues and themes found within the book of Revelation. And even though I've taught through the book of Revelation, going through chapter by chapter, verse by verse, I think it's helpful at times to deal with something within a biblical book and not dealing with the entire chapter, but rather specifically that issue in light of what is revealed perhaps in one chapter or in other places within that same biblical book. And when we get into many of the themes taught within the book of Revelation, we're going to see that sometimes these things are spoken of several different places within the book of Revelation. Well, for our first Revelation short, we're going to be dealing with what's found in the book of Revelation and chapter 18, and this is the fall of Babylon the Great. And the question we want to deal with is simply, what is Babylon? Is Babylon the Babylon of the Old Testament, that same place in modern-day Iraq? Is this what we're talking about? And the answer is no. What we see here in the book of Revelation chapter 8 when it mentions Babylon the Great, it's speaking about not just a city, but an empire. Many times in the Bible, Babylon, which was indeed an ancient city and still exists today as a city, but Babylon was used biblically most frequently to speak about an empire. But once again, the empire that Babylon refers to specifically in the book of Revelation is the empire that the Antichrist is going to be ruling over. And when we look at the scripture, we see that, that John in the book of Revelation speaks about many different empires. He speaks, for example, about Egypt, Assyria, Babylon itself, ancient Babylon, and then the Medes and the Persian, which were one empire that took over after the destruction of Babylon. And then after the Medes and the Persians, we have the Greeks and then the Romans, which were indeed the ruling empire in the time of John. Then John tells us there's going to be a seventh empire. And that final empire, the empire of the Antichrist, is going to come from the seventh. And we see when we study the book of Daniel, that this unique empire that is going to rise up in the last days, it must be, and hear this carefully, it must be out of Europe. This is what Daniel teaches, and we find no reason in the book of Revelation to assume that Scripture would disagree with Scripture. Quite the contrary. Scripture always agrees with Scripture. So Babylon is used as a name that describes this Antichrist empire. And why the name Babylon? Well, two things I like to say. First is that John, his style of writing frequently brought well-known terms or themes from the Old Testament, from the Hebrew Bible to Tanakh, and brought them into his book of Revelation. And in doing so, he took these themes and put them within a new context, a new understanding. And it's only when we understand what was meant in the old can we appreciate what this new revelation, what John wanted to convey. Now let's talk for a moment about ancient Babylon from a biblical standpoint. Babylon came and this empire that destroyed the first temple and took the Jewish people, those in the southern empire known as Judah, into exile back to Babylon. This was disastrous. Babylon is remembered today by the Jewish community, and it's nothing just today, but 
for centuries since the Babylonian captivity took place. It was thought of as a time of shame, a time of suffering, a time of confusion. In fact, the Hebrew word Babylon, where we get that English word Babylon from, Babel, has to do with confusion. We see that going back to the book of Genesis and the Tower of Babylon where God confused the languages. So Babylon was a very strong empire that came to Judah and precisely to the city of Jerusalem and brought about destruction, a destruction that many people felt brought an end to God's promises, God's plan. But this was not the case. After the Babylonian captivity that God limited to 70 years, Israel experienced a type of redemption and restoration back to the promises and the purposes of God. So Babylon was chosen by John, obviously, having been inspired by the Holy Spirit. This name, which has so much relevancy that conveys so much spiritual information to the reader. But it's not speaking about literal Babylon, but rather the final empire that is going to rule over the entire world that is going to be subjected to the rule of the Antichrist, his leadership. Now, when we look specifically at chapter 18, what do we find? We find that Babylon is going to be destroyed specifically by the judgment of God. But this Babylon, it was a dwelling place of that which was unclean for every foul spirit for demonic influence. So the Babylon here speaks of something that is in conflict with the holiness of God, the call of God, the purposes of of God. And when we look, we see that the kings of the earth, the merchants of the world, they committed fornication with her. Now, this is very important because prophetically, fornication in the prophets and also in the book of Revelation does not speak about literal fornication, but let me state with all assurity that there's going to be much adultery and fornication literally from a sexual standpoint that, that, that characterizes this last empire. We see that prevalent in the world today. So I'm not saying that that's not going to be there, but when it speaks about fornication and Babylon, this empire, the kings of the earth committed fornication, what it speaks of, as so often is the case with fornication and adultery in the prophets and in the Bible in general, we're speaking about idolatry. Initially, Babylon is going to be an empire of idolatry. Where one, and it states specifically, that, that Babylon, that this empire glorified itself. That's what it was about. Not glorifying God but glorifying oneself. And that's why people get involved with idolatry because they want things their way. They want to be in control. They want to be God. And this certainly characterizes the Antichrist spirit because he is going to be a type of Satan incarnate, the Antichrist. In a later Revelation short teaching, we're going to deal with the Antichrist. But for our purposes right now, Babylon, it is an empire that the Antichrist is going to rule over, that is going to be founded in idolatrous practices and self-glorification, that is going to be a habitation for demonic influence, every unclean spirit, every foul spirit, that which is in opposition to the things of God. And then something else we see about Babylon, it's interesting because she calls herself, this empire calls herself a queen, and she says, I will not be a widow. Now, how do we understand this? 
Well, widow is synonymous with one who experiences death. She says, I'm not going to experience death. She does not believe that she is going to experience, and death here is synonymous with sin or the consequence of sin, which is God's judgment. She says, I'm a queen, I am no widow, for death is not going to visit me. She says, literally, I won't experience sorrow. It's all about self-glorification and self-joy, being happy with yourself for what you become not a joy of the lord not a gladness that comes from worshiping god so babylon it speaks about an empire that is going to rise up in the last days that the antichrist will lead that he will rule over and that this empire is going to dominate the world and be about defeating the people of god the purposes of god and instead of emphasizing redemption it is going to emphasize that which brings about exile. And what is that? Exile is judgment and a distancing of the promises of God. This empire doesn't want anything connected to the, the presentation of that which is holy or godly or righteous or anything connected to the purposes of God, the plans of God, the will of God. Well, we talked about how the kings of the earth, the merchants of the world, are going to commit fornication, meaning this. They are going to join in gladly with this empire this way. Why? Because they too want self-glory. They too are going to be practicing a spirituality which God sees as idolatry and and this will be the last point I want to make. And that is that Babylon, remember chapter 18, Babylon the Great, she has fallen, she has fallen. Twice it's mentioned. Why? Because Babylon is going to experience the judgment of God. So Babylon, in conclusion, it relates to this final empire the empire of the antichrist that is going to be initially an idolatrous one and then we're going to see something in the same way that nebuchadnezzar he wanted no one worship other than himself we see this in the book of daniel in that same way the antichrist is going to say that he is god that only one can worship him that all other expressions of worship and such will be banned. And if anyone does not worship the Antichrist, then they are going to be punished. But in the end, what is going to happen? We see that God is going to judge Babylon. Now, by the way, Babylon, in the same way that Satan is a liar, that all of his works are counterfeit, his promises are promises of deceit. What is Babylon going to do? Well, notice there's a connection with Babylon and the harlot. Harlot relating here to idolatry as well. A false presentation. Not literally the wife in regard to a covenantal relationship, but a harlotry. We see that which is in conflict with the, the covenant restrictions of a godly based marriage so the harlot what is she going to do she is going to present herself in fine garments of of purple of royalty of scarlet with fine precious stones all of this is a false presentation of holiness a false presentation of the glory trying to capture the glory that only belongs to god so in conclusion babylon is that final empire that the antichrist is going to rule over and in the same way that it wanted to bring judgment and an end to god's people destroying the temple in the city of jerusalem but we know something it was not ultimately successful god brought an end to babylon and god brought restoration to the jewish people and a type of redemption 
And this is what God's going to do when he judges Babylon, when Babylon the Great falls and is fallen. God is going to, with this defeat of Babylon, restore the people, his old covenant people, back to him through a new covenant relationship. And this is going to bring about full restoration and the outcome of redemption, which is the establishment of the kingdom of God. And that's why Babylon falls. And we see what brought about the fall of Babylon. And that was the return of Messiah, the second coming, when he himself destroyed Babylon. And it's this victory of Messiah in chapter 19 that brings about what we see in chapters 20 and 21 and 22, which relates to the establishment of the kingdom of God. This principle that's so important that it's the judgment of God, his righteous judgment upon Babylon, that will bring about a change, the establishment, ultimately, of the new Jerusalem, his kingdom. So Babylon's destruction is what gives us a kingdom joy because it brings about a kingdom reality. Well, I'll close with that until our next short video on an additional theme within the book of Revelation. Until that time, may God bless you and shalom from Israel.